Okay. <clears throat> I wanted to make this video. Because, um, I had a long talk with somebody today. God knows I can't handle. I can't handle that Jesus is legit in every area. <laughs> I can't handle that, that he's good in every area. I can't handle that. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. He's perfect in everything. There's no way. But it seems like But I was told this today, and it was inspired strongly, she said, to tell me this. Uh, God wants to utilize me to make disciples, true disciples, for Jesus out of you guys, as I assumed he would try to make do, make me do, utilize me to do. As people follow me, as Jesus knew people would follow me, as far as my channel, he wants me to, to make disciples out of you guys, real ones, real disciples. Because he knows I can't disprove him. He knows I can't disprove him. I can't. And God bless him. I tried so hard. I can't disprove him. I'd be like, why make disciples out of somebody that I can disprove? That's exactly it. Why would I make disciples for Jesus if I can disprove Jesus? You know what I mean? But he knows after today, I've hit that point. I have. I can't disprove Jesus. I can't. He knows I've hit that point. I'm exhausted from trying to disprove Jesus. I'm exhausted. Like you would not believe. I'm exhausted. He knows I am. I'm like, oh, I give up. I can't disprove you. I give up. Since you can't disprove me, help me, my friend. Help me, my friend. That's I feel like I'm right about this. Since you can't disprove me, my friend, help me, my friend. Be, make disciples out of my, out of the followers that I gave you. <laughs> Jesus is like the followers that I gave you. Make disciples out of them. All right, since you gave me the, since you gave me the Spartans, I'll make disciples out of them. I'll make dis disciples out of them, and Spartans as well. I'll make Spartans and disciples out of them. Same time, same time. Jesus is like, that's okay as well. Spartans and disciples, that's all right. Either way. Disciples slash Spartans for Jesus. Disciples slash Spartans. You don't have to be a Spartan if you don't. And you don't have to be a disciple if you don't. Well, that's what he wants. You can be a disciple if you want. But God knows. I can make so many disciples out of people that I ain't fine. <laughs> No one's tried as hard as me to, to disprove Jesus. No one. No atheist has tried as hard as me to disprove Jesus. Not even close. Not even close, and God knows it. 
no hardcore atheist <laughs> that has all the backing of science has tried harder than me to disprove Jesus. None of them combined. I can't disprove Jesus. I can't. I've tried everything with my own body. My own body. I tried to I try to disprove Jesus with my own body. Suffering. My own body. I tried to disprove Jesus. And he knows it. My own body, mind, soul. I try to disprove Jesus. Like you would not believe. And not just that. I try to disprove him, uh, his honesty. <laughs> the lie, the God cannot lie thing. I try to disprove that. So far it's been correct. He's He's been... So far, I've just I've tried so hard to disprove him. <laughs> if I disprove him, I don't have to be on the earth. He knows it. I don't. I know it deep down. I'm here for Jesus. That's it. I know it. I've always known it. If I disprove Jesus, I don't have to be here. I was born <laughs> knit in the womb by Jesus, <laughs> specifically for his purpose. I was. I knew. Just like God himself designed Jesus in the womb of Mary. I'm saying it right now. <laughs> Just like he designed Jesus in the womb of Mary. Not Mary Magdalene, but Mary, Jesus' mother. Just like Jesus. Just like God did that. To make Jesus specific to the way he wanted for his purpose. Half God, half man. That's the way Jesus designed me in the womb. It is. No joke. For a specific purpose. No joke. His secret weapon that nobody even knew. Staring oh, in plain sight this whole time. This whole time God's secret weapon was in plain sight. <laughs> I'm a secret weapon. I didn't even know it. I didn't even know I was a secret weapon. This whole time. I could have a mild mannered purpose. I could. Nothing that crazy. But knowing God and knowing me, I think the only thing that excites me is Dragon Ball Z stuff. Even still. Whatever I'm designed for, it's probably going to be exciting. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> like me look to the sky. <laughs> as I, like me look to the sky as Jesus sends his flames of fire to the earth. <laughs> that exciting. I'm here to look, watch Jesus send a flame of fire to the earth and cleanse it. That exciting. No joke. No joke. Enough about that. Enough about that. But yeah, I don't I had a long ass talk with the Christian today and I know it was God talking talking through me to me through them because God knows I've hit this point I have I have I've hit this this point of defeat in this area <laughs> kind of in shock as well of um Realizing I can't disprove Jesus. I haven't been able to disprove Jesus. I haven't. I thought I could by now, and I told a Christian that. I thought I could I thought I could disprove Jesus by now. By now. 
at this time, I thought I could disprove them by now. Something. Something. I was so certain about Jesus was a certain way most of my life. I was so certain. The religion I grew up in made Jesus seem like the most corrupt person that's ever lived. <laughs> like he sold out. No joke. So I'm like, this is going to be easy to just disprove something about Jesus. No joke. I thought it was going to be a cakewalk. Disprove Jesus? I don't have to be on the earth anymore. No joke. That's what God was thinking. Of. He knows that I was thinking that if I could disprove Jesus, I don't have to be here. This would be a piece of cake. That's how certain I thought the type of person Jesus was growing up. That's how certain I was. I'm like, yeah, I can prove he's, he's, he's a corrupt bureaucrat. I can, I can prove that Jesus sold out. I can prove it. I know it. I know I can. So far, I haven't been able to. He's, he's lived my life so exactly, so precisely. He knew I'd be trying to disprove him this whole way. He knew I'd be trying to disprove him. Everything he did back in the day, I'd be trying to disprove it myself. Everything I said about Jesus, I'd be trying to disprove it. I would try to get off this road. Anything to get off this road. Because a part of me doesn't think this road will be that great. I don't. I'm being honest. I'm like, that's another thing. I'm like, this road won't be that great. <laughs> the specific plan God has for me won't be that great. It's just going to be sitting in church more. Fuck that shit. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. His plan won't be that great. <laughs> I did enough of that sitting in church thing in the cult. I did enough of that. Luckily, the Christian church I go to, it, it seems more exciting. Seems all right. It's more my it's more my style. It is. It's more my style than the Mormon religion. The Mormon religion. watching me in that cult the whole time. <laughs> he was. He was watching me in that cult the whole time. Being bored to tears. Bored to tears in his cult. <laughs> that I thought was his cult. And that's another thing I talked to the Christians about today. I'm like, do you believe that God was a polygamist <laughs> with all these wives? You know what I mean? And all that. She's like, I'm like, do you think God's like that? The real guy? She's like, probably not. Dang. Because, <laughs> you know, cause the, the real God was like that. I don't know. With a full harem of women. Like, like the man, the desires of a man. <laughs> that wouldn't impress me, God knows. I wouldn't. That didn't, that didn't impress me in the cult. That God was a polygamist and, you know, had many wives. I'm like, I'm not impressed. That's not impressive. I'm way better than that. I'm way better than that nonsense. That polygamy nonsense. I'm way better than that. And then she directed me to this uh, scripture. Probably no accident. God was totally talking through her, I think. A, a scripture about when he says, uh, God created man and God created woman. That's it. You know, <laughs> one on one. No joke. As my best friend says, and that's this comes to my mind, basics are key always. Man and woman. One and one. Basics are key. Always. Don't overcomplicate it with the complications of the cult <laughs> of polygamy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Men and women. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. <laughs> she, 
she made it very basic to me. She did. She made it very basic to me. She did. And she's also like, they were saying, she was like, God, God realized that just having Adam on the earth by himself with the animals was not enough. He was still lonely. So he made a woman for Adam. Yep. I noticed this as well with the animals. A lot of people are like, oh, the animals are all I need. <laughs> my dog is above the humans. My dog is, he's, he's my, he's above the humans. Only dogs welcome here. Humans are tolerated. You've heard those phrases. You've heard those phrases. The animal lovers above humans. That's who I'm talking about. <laughs> the animal lovers above humans. But I've noticed this. There's a gap between me and an animal. There's a gap. They can't provide me with what I need. They can't. An animal can't. I don't care how much they love me. <laughs> yeah, how much a dog loves me. They can't give me the conversation that a human can, that a woman can. And I realized that today. I did. I was talking to two women today. <laughs> I can't have the conversation that I had with the women that I had today. That I, you know, I can't have that same conversation with an animal. I can't. There's a gap. Sorry for all the animal lovers out there. I'm sorry. Animals are all right. They are. But I have noticed this. You know. I've, I've hung out with ducks. A lot of you know. I've hung out with ducks in the past. I'd rather hang out with ducks than a narcissist. I was, that's where I was back then. Like, I'd rather hang out with ducks than narcissists. Narcissists. So that's what I did. I hung out with ducks. I have video proof. Video proof. I hung out with ducks instead of instead of narcissists of my life. It's true, I did. But even then, those birds couldn't give me what I what I needed. Really, I needed a woman or something. I did. I needed what a woman could give me. A conversation, something. It's true. God knows it. That's why He created Adam and Eve. Adam needed his Eve. He did. I do too. I need my Eve. Whoever that whoever that may be. Even if her name's Eve. Whoever that may be. <laughs> That'd be crazy if her name was Eve. <laughs> Don't you? God knows. God knows. This just click. I only need one woman to make Demi. That's it. I don't need to make it complicated. I don't need to have a harem of women. I don't need a harem of women like like the prophets of the cult. Like the prophets of the cult had a harem of women. I don't need that. Or their God that had tons of women. I don't need that. I just need one woman. That's it. Just one to make Demi. That's it. Basics are key always, as my best friend always. This is part of the basics. I just need one woman. That's it. One. To make Timmy. That's it. Okay. That's it. That's all I need. One woman to make Timmy. That's it. Basics are key always. Yeah. That's part of basics. Simple basics. For sure. I got a big pep talk from God today. I did. I'm like, because God knows a lot of a lot of my life I didn't see certain things as bad. I didn't because they brought enjoyment of the flesh. They did, you know, addictive stuff. Yeah, like smoking a cigarette back in the day. That felt good to smoke a cigarette. It did stuff like that. God knows. I'm like, if it makes me feel good, why why is it bad? God knows this confused me most of my life. Even still, it confuses me. It feels good to the flesh. Why is it bad? I still struggle with this. 
the general still struggles with this upcoming claim. I struggle, struggle. I still struggle with the flesh. I do. God knows. That's why I was like, I was hoping that Jesus wasn't perfect. I'm like, if, if he, if Jesus slipped up all these times, I don't feel so bad. I don't feel so bad if Jesus slipped up. There's no way he's perfect on this earth. That's another thing I talked to the Christian about. I'm like, I, I'm like, for most of my life, I could not believe that Jesus was perfect. Sinless. Sinless. That whole time on the earth. But apparently it might be true. Apparently. Apparently it might be true. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> I'm not done with my investigation on Jesus. I'm not done. I'm not done. All right. Another thing I, I said to her, I was like, I can't, I can't believe, I can't comprehend that someone is as good as they say Jesus is. He's that good of a person beyond the goodness of a man, way beyond. He's that good of a person. It's all. He's always good. He is. I can't believe that. I can't. You know what I mean? No desire to stab anybody in the back to get ahead in Jesus. None of that. No doggy dog mentality from Jesus. And that shocks me. It does. It shocks me. It does. To be that good of a, of a being. <laughs> to be that good. And back it up. And that's another thing I talked to a Christian about. He's not, he's not just making me. Jesus is not making me just guess anymore. <laughs> He's proving stuff. He is. Because he knows most of my life I didn't really believe he could do anything. I didn't really believe he was anything. So he's proving stuff. He is. He's proving stuff to me. The fact that he can't he cannot lie. He's proving that he's proving that as we go still. He cannot lie. And <clears throat> He's proving um, his nobility every day. Every day that passes by, his nobility is more and more. It increases the nobility factor of him. It does. He's proving that each day. He's proving he's not an idiot, basically. <laughs> God knows, like, I thought Jesus was like, no offense to the people of the planet. They're, they're kind of clueless. The people of the planet are kind of clueless. They're, they're dumb. The people of the planet, no offense. Jesus ain't like that. He's smart as hell. He doesn't skip a beat. Jesus does not skip a beat. And that's what I thought about today. He doesn't skip a beat. He doesn't get distracted by anything. In order, in order for him to have brought me to this point and tracked me to this point, he had to be on the ball the whole time. The whole time. He had to be on the ball. Not distracted by anything. Not distracted by a harem of women. <laughs> like the cult says. Jesus ain't like that. Jesus is not a polygamist, I'm pretty sure. At this point, he's not a polygamist. Jesus is not a polygamist. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. If he was, I would have been. I would have been so far in the lead of Jesus. It's not even funny. If Jesus was a polygamist, I'd be way ahead in another category. Because that's the tricky thing. That's been the tricky thing. God. That's another thing I talked to the Christian. God started me in a fake religion. 
He did. It, it's, a, it's a horrible thing to do to somebody. It's a horrible do, thing to do to somebody. It is. Start somebody in a fake religion. No joke. It's the most confusing experience of all time. You're, you're in a fake religion. You can't get out. You're in a fake religion. They're brainwashing you. You can't get out. See what I mean? Even, even though I've gotten out, even with the help of my videos of deprogramming myself, trying to find the real truth, even with the help of my own videos, I still struggle. I do. I struggle with all those years. I struggle with everything I went through in the cult. Everything. My mind still struggles and God knows it. That's why he's real gentle with me. He's trying to... Uh, He's trying to make my mind right. He is. That's what I'll say. He's trying to make my mind right. Correct. Sane. <laughs> He's trying to make my mind right and sane. Eventually. With time. But it takes time. And that's not a thing I was reminded. This path I'm on it still takes time. Because of everything I went through. I went through a lot. <laughs> I did. That's a lot of years of being in a cult. It is. And in a cult family as well. I mean like. The cult dynamic. Like two narcissist parents, basically. But anyways. Uh, but anyways, we talked about a lot of stuff. Me and these two Christians, you know. They believe I'm farther on my road than I think I am. And I think they're right. I don't know how far I am on the road that God has me on. I may be I may be doing better than I think, farther ahead on the road than I realize. And I don't think that was said by accident. I think I'm farther ahead than I realize I am. And God wanted me to know that. That I'm 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 more farther than I think. Another thing I talk to the Christians about is the speaking in tongues thing. I always thought it was weird and nonsense. But they're making me think it's like dead serious stuff. The speaking in tongues thing. They're like, your brain makes, your brain is telling you, the flesh is telling you that it's stupid and mumbo jumbo is speaking in tongues. And they're right. <laughs> My brain is saying that it's a bunch of nonsense noise. They're like, don't let that fool you. I'm like, I, I don't know what anybody's saying. I'm like, do you even know what you're saying? The speaking in tongues? They're like, no. I'm like, then why, how do you know it's not nonsense? They're like, God knows. My spirit knows. That's what they say. So, uh, but I did tell them one thing. Most of my life, and this is true, I've, I've, I've felt like I've had a, a language. Um, I I've, I've felt like English wasn't my first language. No joke. I've never told somebody that, really, until recently, I think. It's true, like, it's like a, it, it does seem like I know a different, I've known a different language that I don't vocalize. It's true. Like a spiritual language or something that even God knows I, I communicate with or something. That I, commun I feel like I communicated with my best friend with, without talking. Something. I'm just saying, it's weird to speak English as if it's not my first language. It's my first language I was taught on this earth. It doesn't feel like my first language. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't feel like my primary language. No joke. I said that straight up to the Christian. <laughs> so I'm like, is that the speaking in tongues? Like wanting to come out this language that I've never vocalized? They're like, yes. No joke. 
maybe there's truth to the speaking in tongues thing. I just never done it. I never pushed pushed it out. I don't know. I don't know. I used to think the speaking in tongues thing was totally demonic. I used to think that. Now I'm not sure. Now I'm not sure. The Christians made me think that there may be a, a real spiritual side to it. Like on God's side of it. No joke. So let's make me think again about the speaking in tongues thing. Maybe. I was certain it was just nonsense. But that mentally insane. <laughs> you know, speaking in nonsense, you know, babble. But now I don't know. I don't know. But I do feel certain that God led me to that Christian church. I do. That speak in tongues. He led me there for some reason. I'm not sure. But I don't think it was there to, have, to, to, to put the hammer of justice on this Christian church for corruption. No joke. That's what's throwing the curveball in my face. I thought it was the hammer of justice for Jesus, you know, for sending me into any corrupt places. This may not be there. This may not be one of those corrupt places. Jesus may really support it. <laughs> no joke. That's what I'm. That's what's blowing my mind. Jesus might actually support this Christian church. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Just had a long sit with myself today. I did. I've had a long sit with myself. I have. I'm like I can't disprove Jesus. I can't outrun him. I can't disprove him. I can't hide from him. None of that. I can't. And I realize that today. All I know is that, and I told the Christian this. I told her straight up. The only way I could be standing in front of you talking to you, like I've talked to the Christian. The only way I could be in a position like this is if Jesus suffered my life exactly. And it's true. She's like, yep, yeah, you're right. He did. And it's true. He did. Part of the suffering that Jesus did back in the day was my life. No joke. <laughs> That's how he's been able to predict my future. He doesn't predict the future like some um, medium or something. Um, stuff like that. When God predicts your future, it's more a for sure thing. It is. It's a more for, for sure thing. It is. Than some medium telling you something. No joke. That's what I realized. God can really, really see the future. Not some medium. God can see the future so well. He's seen me fall in love and make Timmy already. That's how good God is. I've never seen a medium predict that stuff. Not one. Not one medium has predicted that. God has. That's some serious, serious future seeing ahead of you serious to see me in a relationship i've never felt love before 
never been close to being in a relationship with anybody. God has seen me in a relationship and make Demi already. No joke. That's some serious future predicting. That's the God cannot lie right there. In order for him to do that, to predict my real future of like hardcore stuff like that, he have had to suffer my entire life. And I told a Christian this. God threw a huge curveball in my face. He did. He did. I did not think God was legitimate enough to get me to a point, to even at this point. I didn't feel he was that good. So good, it puts me in shock. And that's what God realized today. I think God realized that I'm, I'm a boy. I'm a boy of his in shock. I'm a boy. I'm a. I'm one of his boys. That's in shock. I'm one of the boys. One of God's boys. That is in total shock. No joke. God knew I thought I thought I could disprove Jesus by now. I thought I could. By now, I thought I could disprove something about him. Any category. I thought I could disprove just one category was false about Jesus. Just one. If I can disprove one, and that's what the Christian said as well. If you can put dis if you can if you can disprove if you can prove that God can lie even a little bit, it's all it all goes to it all goes it all falls to the ground like a house of cards, and it's true. That's what I was trying to do. Just one chink in the armor. One chink in the armor of God. Yeah. Just one time, just one time God made a white light. Just once. Just once. I can disprove the whole Bible. If God lies, just a little lie. I can disprove the whole Bible. It's true. That's how serious that claim is of the God cannot lie. That's what I told them. Like that God cannot lie is so heavy, it's not even funny. It all falls down. If that's not true, it all falls down. It all falls down if that's not true. There were some other things I was told that I'm like, dang it, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> God knows I have to work on stuff still. I still have to work on stuff. <laughs> I think I was hoping that, and this is true, if I could prove that Jesus wasn't is uh, not perfect, if I could prove that, that he, he's not perfect, I don't have to work on myself anymore. <laughs> I don't have to clean up my act, basically. <laughs> no joke. That's what I thought. If I can just prove he's not perfect, I don't have to try to be perfect either. <laughs> no joke. If Jesus ain't perfect, I don't have to try to be perfect either. I don't have to clean up my bad habits. No joke. <laughs> but since, since Jesus is still the, solid, Mm. I thought I could disprove, disprove something about him by right now. I thought I could by now. So I wouldn't have to change my ways totally. I wouldn't have to change my ways totally. I better get going to bed. Uh, I need to get some rest.